Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in San Jose, California at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference. And I'm speaking now with Bob Denny of DC3 Dream Software Development. I think many readers of Sky and Telescope have seen the expression remote observing cropping up more and more, whether it's on images or on observations that amateurs are making. And I think most people have the concept that remote observing means that a person is working in the comfort of their home and they're running their observatory, whether it's in the backyard, another county, or perhaps half a world away in another hemisphere. Bob Denny is one of the guys that is doing all of that software development. So Bob, I want you to tell me a little bit about the stuff that you have developed, and I know you also have a, a real interest in explaining to people what you consider remote observing. Ah, yeah. Well, thanks for asking. Um, a lot of people think that remote observing is just remoting into your desktop in the observatory and running it the same way you would run it if you're act actually in the observatory. What I, my approach to this has been considerably different. Basically, automate the entire observatory so that it's autonomous. So it in other runs words, by itself. You want it to run autonomously. Correct. That's what I was doing, is working to completely automate the observatory in a way that you just tell it what you want taken and when you want them taken, the images you want taken and when, and you can transmit that to the observatory beforehand, and then it starts observing when you told it and does the observations that you told it to do, okay. all by itself, and now, manages all the pieces of the observatory hey, doing okay. that. Now I'm going to back you up on that because your software can control all of the components of the observatory. Do you have limitations on the products that are out there that your software will run? It does run the dome, runs the camera, runs the focuser, runs the filter wheel, runs the telescope, points the telescope. It does all of that by itself. Anything that has a driver, a standard driver, which is what the ASCOM standards are about, any, any software or equipment that has an ASCOM driver is compatible with our software. So there's quite a variety of telescopes, domes, focusers, cameras, all of that that is compatible because we don't build into the software the specific controls for in individual instruments. We, we pr program to a generic interface and then the instrument manufacturer supplies that next layer. All right, so you've got the automation now of all the equipment. How's the best way to set up what you want that equipment to do? Now that's, that's a key thing. One of the problems that people look at when they go to automation is, how do I know when to start something? How do I know what I should observe when? And visualizing how their potential targets are in the sky at different times of, of the evening is difficult without a planetarium. Now how do you translate that picture in the planetarium to a plan that you'd use to feed into ACP so that it can run off and do it? And we have a, a, an extra piece of software called ACP Planner. We give it away for free because all it does is make ACP plans. And we, you use that in conjunction with a planetarium in your mouse wheel to visualize what you're doing, pick your targets, load them into the plan, and automatically send them to the observatory for observation later. So in other words, long ago when people were saying, oh, you had to write a script to run your telescope, basically this is automatically generating that script and it knows it's planetarium software, so it knows when it's dark, it knows when the object's up, and you can specify all the parameters, like you don't want to shoot an object if it's too low to the horizon. Right. You can do all of that, so that's planner. And then you just upload that, and you've got a program called Scheduler. That's a completely different animal, and it sits on top of ACP, and what Scheduler does is it completely removes the when from the observing. In other words, you don't have to pick the times anymore. You just tell Planner months ahead of time what objects you want to image and the conditions under which you want them imaged. Such and such above the horizon, excellent skies, good skies, so far away from the moon depending on its phase. And then plan Scheduler will sit there and look. Every time it does an observation, it goes back and looks at everything it's got on its plate and decides what to do next. And it repeats that cycle all night, day after day after day, and basically you just don't do anything and your objects are finished. When, you're, when your complete set of objects is finished, you get a text message or an email, uh, or a text message on your phone saying, your images of NGC 1234 are now complete. And that may be in a week, it may be two weeks, who can predict what the weather is? But it does that. It completely removes the timing aspects of planning.
All right, so if you have a plan, let's say you want to uh, do a supernova search, and you want to go back and look at these galaxies whenever it's convenient, you can sort of ask scheduler to go in, and whenever it's an optimal time, like the moon isn't in the way, or the galaxy's in a good place, you can just have it go repeat observations night after night, and get these that you could then go back and look and see if something's changed like a supernova, right? Actually, you can put in more than one target. It wouldn't just sit on one supernova or one part of the sky. What One of the big things that schedulers use for is photometry. They'll put in 500 photometric targets to run over the next several months. And this thing will sit there and, and get data night after night from target bouncing around from one target to another and getting that data so they end up with a series of data on a particular star. But it's done by interleaving that with all the work on the other stars. So you just throw work at it and it picks the time to take the images and goes off and does it. Does all the figuring out. It does all the figuring out. Boy, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's, that's, that's kind of avant-garde. I mean, it's something that is, I know is the future, but that's where I was 10 years ago when I did ACP and came out and people are going, what? Yeah. But now it's kind of accepted. Automation is kind of accepted 10 years later. I figure it's at least a few years down the road before people get what Scheduler really does. Okay. And I, I'm going to segue because you started to tell me, you were talking about the future, and you were just starting to tell me some projects you are working on that to me sound incredibly exciting. This is some of the transient event stuff. Can you explain that? Yeah. Having the Scheduler allows a whole world of, of interesting things beyond just doing observations. Because the scheduler makes a decision as to when it's, what it's going to do next after it finishes one observation, does not lay the whole night out and then go do it. It says, what, what should I be doing now? So it makes it possible for you in the middle of the night to drop in new work that may be high priority. And the big area that that applies to is something that professional astronomers have been hot on for the last several years and that's transients, supernovae, cataclysmic variable explosions, that sort of thing that are happening and no one knows where. So these, they have surveys that are out there looking in the sky for these things. When they see them, they broadcast them on a special network called VO events. All right, this is on the internet. Right. So they're out looking, they're, I know gamma ray bursts are among these. They're looking for events and they suddenly get a hit. Something has happened right now, right here. Right. We need observations. So they broadcast out on the internet and said, here's what it is, here's where it is. And you've got software that is sitting there listening. Correct. In the background, it hears one of these events and it does what? As soon as it gets a notice that one of these transient events has occurred, it cast, categorizes the event, classifies it, and figures out what kind of event is it, goes and chooses an appropriate observing strategy, stops what's going on in the scheduler, drops this new request in, and tells the scheduler to go observe this now. And it happens in seconds. All autonomously. Right, so really automatically. All right, so you're sitting there at home, maybe asleep, and your telescope in Australia is running away, taking pictures that you've scheduled it, but it's listening, and suddenly a gamma ray burst is picked up with one of these satellites. The information goes out. Your observatory in Australia says, oh, wait a minute, this is important. I'm sitting in a place where I can see this right now. I'm going to stop what I'm doing, and I'm going to take this pre-recorded sequence of events for this type of observation, and I'm going to make them. And I wake up in the morning and go, wow, this happened overnight. And That's suddenly exactly I, right. I've got a whole bunch of data here that my telescope collected because it was sitting there listening for this type of stuff. But wait, there's but more, wait. as they say. Besides doing the data acquisition and, and storing it there and logging it and telling you that it's happened, you can also turn on an option that will tell the scheduler and the VO event receiver once it has taken this follow-up data it will make another broadcast over this network advising the other telescopes in the world that you have this fo follow-up data and it also puts that data on the web where other people can get to it so within minutes of having completed the observations your observations are available to professional astronomers on the internet for them to take a look at and evaluate all right well thank you very much for telling me about your products and your software I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope, here with Bob Denny of DC3Dreams at the 2009 AIC Conference in San Jose, California.